Hey guys, and welcome back to the Game Not Game podcast. My name is Green, and with me, as always, is my co-host Zen from his channel, Zen and Cyrene. How you doing, Zen? I am doing well. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty great. I just heard about this crazy new Twitch thing. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Sorry, I got a Why bit distracted. The... Oh. Uh, because <laughs> my, op- my obsessed neighbor is running around like a crazy person again. How good. Yeah. He's play- so. What did you say he was playing? Battlefield 1? He's playing Battlefield One, yeah, whichever is the uh, the latest one for that yeah, that came would be out. one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Go not to be confused with Battlefield Two that came out like uh, fucking five years ago. Yeah, yeah. Well, he gets <laughs> real it on the Xbox One, not to be confused with the Xbox. <laughs> I hate that so much. I hate it all. It's so bad. Oh God. Well, yes, hopefully um, it won't be too disrupted, but he does run around very excitedly and, and yells, fuck you, fuck you, when he's playing the game. So <laughs> I've never I've never heard it picked up in any of our recordings. Oh, good. Um, so, I, yeah, I don't think it, your mic picks it up. Good, good. I'm glad does, to hear that. viewers, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it is. So, uh, so yeah, Twitch, selling video games. Then, what, what can you tell us about this exciting new development in game platforms? Yeah, so this actually came out, uh, the new, came in the, out in the news a few weeks ago. Uh, we just forgot to talk about it. But essentially, if you haven't heard about this somehow, and I, and I wouldn't be surprised if people haven't heard about this, because I still yeah, see I people... Hadn't. <laughs> yeah, Yeah, and I still see, see people wondering what bits are, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, but... I'm looking at a Polygon article here, and I think the best thing for me to do is to just paraphrase from it. Uh, Twitch has announced that it is partnering with a variety of developers and studios, including Ubisoft and Telltale Games, to sell games directly through Twitch streams. And uh, viewers will see a button giving them the option to purchase the game right under the main window on the streamer's page. The streamer we will get 5% of the sale if they use this button to buy the game, and the viewer along with the game will receive a quote-unquote free Twitch crate. Uh, the Twitch crate comes mm-hmm. with randomized items which are tailored to specific Twitch streamers and allows the owner of the crate to find in exclusive emotes, chat badges, and bits. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Uh, The games that are bought through Twitch can be played through Twitch's own desktop app. It is probably the same Twitch launcher that has been used to distribute free games to Twitch Prime members. Uh, Mm. Through uh, existing developer and publishing own services like Uplay. But no word yet on whether Steam is included in this group of developer platforms. Right. That is interesting. It's a bold move. Mm Mm-hmm. Because uh, for the last, I don't know, 10 years or so, every single successful PC game sales platform has been like, and you get a Steam key. Uh, Because if you don't do that, then, uh, you know, (laughs) nobody wants to buy your fucking games because it's like, I want to put it on my Steam account. Um, And Steam is very supportive of this model, actually, because they want everybody using their fucking platform as well. So, you know, it's it's kind of a mutually beneficial thing that mostly benefits Steam because it keeps them top dog. Uh, So it's really interesting to see a company, especially one as big as Amazon, just going, no, fuck that. We're going to sell games for our own platform, our own launcher, not Steam. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. because I don't know about you, but like for me, almost all of my games are on Steam, and I kind of like it that way just for the convenience of it. So sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how interested I'll be in buying like Twitch launcher exclusive games that can't be linked back to my Steam account, just because that you know it's the same thing as if uh, you know for people who use something like iTunes, if a song was like, nope, you can't put that in your iTunes library, people will be like, well. Hmm. You know, that's that kind of fucks up my whole organizational structure for video games, right? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, interesting. Well, to me anyway, it doesn't matter as much. I'm perfectly... I mean, I would prefer the convenience as well, too. I mean, I do like that. But I have GOG. I have GOG. And sometimes I mm-hmm. buy games through GOG for various re- uh, reasons. For example, I bought The Witcher 3 through GOG because, well, GOG and CD Projekt are the same company. And yeah. I wanted to get the soundtrack and extras from buying The Witcher from them. Right. And but, uh, Correct mm-hmm. me if I'm wrong, didn't that give you a Steam key as well? 
that did not give me a steam key it and didn't. i wow i wasn't expecting let me let me make sure because because gong and steam have this uh, or gong has this program called steam connect as we have discussed before on this yeah. program in which they will provide steam keys and i think eventually it probably will yeah no, 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 no. That's yeah. That's not how. Yeah, I, I'm mistaken. That's not how God Connect works. It only goes one way from Steam to God, not the other way around, which makes sense. Oh right? yeah, yeah. You're totally right. Wow, I had not, I had not thought of that. I'm like, I'm used to uh, Humble, where it is like you buy a game over there and then you get a Steam key. But I right. guess God does not do that generally, do they? No, no. God. I mean, God <laughs> would sure have to actually. I'm not sure I've spent money on GOG. To, now that I think about it, I think um, I think my GOG games are from Steam Connect, and also um, I got my uh, my review copy of Witcher Three, ah. Witcher Three through GOG. Ah, that makes sense. But I don't think I've ever actually bought anything over there. Oh, and then I bought my uh, my Witcher Three um, DLC. But yeah, I don't have that for Steam as a result. Huh. Okay. Uh, I'll tell you that I was on GOG before I was on Steam. Wow. Yeah. So I'm a long time GOG user. Yeah, I've I, like I had been vaguely aware of GOG's existence for a really long time, but I think until um, until Witcher Three, I hadn't really gotten anything from them. I just kind of knew they were out there. How familiar are you with GOG's history? Well, they used to be for old games, right? Yep, that's exactly right. Yeah. Good old they games. Used to be like they they would take games that are like they would run on Windows ninety eight and shit, and they would like refurbish them so that they would work on modern hardware and then sell them modern sure. software. I should say. Yep. That 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 was my impression of what they were, and then suddenly they became not that, and I was like, oh, weird. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of interesting because. Um... Because it's exactly what like what you said, right? I went into GOG for two reasons. First of all, I heard about them from a podcast, actually. The RPG cast. Mm. So long, old, old podcast. And then because they're all about RPG games, they pointed GOG as a place where you can get up-to-date versions or fixed versions of old RPGs. And that's what I was interested in. Uh, sure. I wanted to play games like Baldur's Gate and, in fact, Might & Magic. I, I bought the entire Might and Magic anthology on GOG because when I was a kid, I played Might and Magic 2. Right, so all those old games. And then after that, it just kind of expanded for me to buying all kinds of old RPGs. I own all yeah. my um my old Bioware game. Ha ha ha, Bioware. We'll talk about that later. But I own, <laughs> I own all my old Bioware games through GOG, not Steam. Wow, interesting. Yeah, so, so I... um. I like GOG, but most of my games are on Steam now because Steam is just that dominant. Yep. Yeah, it, anytime you get a game, there's going to be some way to put it on your Steam account with few exceptions. Mm-hmm. And the fact of the matter is, though, given that Steam is so dominant, I think, well, not given, but now that Steam is so dominant, it's really tough for any platform to get through to them. I know of a bunch that launched, actually, um, uh, do you know that game called This Wall of Mine? Mm-hmm. So the company behind This Wall of Mine and the other games that they did, all those tower defense games, they launched their own game store. I think I vaguely remember hearing something about this, yes. Yeah, and recently... What was it called again? It was called Games you know? Republic. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, and then they, sh- they a few months ago, they shut down because there was no way they, w- they would be able to gain traction with yeah. Steam in the picture and so i think this twitch development is really interesting because i think of all the new competitors out there now they probably have the greatest chance of shaking things up a little bit yeah they've got the the company size they have you know amazon is experienced in running storefronts that's what Mm -hmm. they fucking do um so they've got the experience they've got the capital to do it and um, they've got kind of an established audience with Twitch, where it's like, you know, every Twitch streamer is going to be really incentivized to tell people, hey, buy your games here, not on Steam. And that's kind of a social movement that um, hasn't, you know, that, that hasn't been a possibility in the past. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, getting, getting people to actually go, you know, start recommending don't use Steam anymore, use this thing. It's really hard. Um, 
yeah, where was I going? I had something else I was going to say, but I forgot. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that's uh, the, just the idea that there's going to be a cultural push is big. Oh, right. I was going to say, okay, so Humble um, is similar in that, hey, go buy your games on Humble, you know, they're, they're, the prices are comparable, they give some of the money to charity and everything, but what, then what people do is they go on Humble, they buy a game, and they get the Steam key and put it on their Steam account, so it's, you know, it doesn't give the money to Steam, but it still gives the... Um, the like home platform advantage to Steam, mm-hmm. uh, which keeps Steam relevant, even though people might not be buying the games there. It's still the dominant market force because everybody has fucking Steam on their computer. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, this is the this is distinct from Humble's thing in that it's actually no. Instead of buying a Steam key, buy a Twitch launcher key. Right. So yeah, we'll see how it works. Right. I think that um, that for example, right? Uh, you what you just said—the fact that you could support your famous, your favorite streamer while getting a game—is going to be mm-hmm. it's going to be a big incentivizer. The other thing, yeah, and that get I think, Twitch stuff too, and get, get Twitch and stuff, stuff. Yeah, like, that's that's pretty good. Yeah, and that's what's really interesting to me about this. Uh, the fact of the matter is that all of this is plugged into the Amazon Twitch ecosystem at this point, mm-hmm. right? And that's really powerful because think about it. Let's say in a year or something, once this platform has been established, Amazon announces that all, all Amazon Prime members get one coupon for a game every other year, every other, other month or something to really incentivize oh, their entire Twitch Prime or Amazon Prime subscribers who are gamers also to jump onto that platform yep yeah right. that would almost uh like something like that would make me a lot more likely to sign up for amazon prime because mm-hmm. it's already a tempting thing you know the the free fast shipping on everything and the exclusive deals and everything like mm-hmm. plus you know the the existing twitch uh incentives you know they add a little bit more than that and more to that they'll just They'll just be the thing that everybody pays money for too for everything. Mm-hmm. They also they want to get into like food too. You do all your grocery shopping through Amazon. You can just buy everything. Every time you spend money, you can just give it to Amazon. <laughs> it's be it basically almost works like that at this point because yeah, how, it's the, very close. Like a third of the internet or something is dependent on Amazon Web Services in some way or another, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, it's very. They have a very impressive reach. Yep. They're one, so, of, one of the titans. They're up there with Google now. Yeah, yeah. I would say they are definitely one of the only companies that could that could be on the same standing as Google. Mm-hmm. Yep. And they, and the best part or the nice thing about it is that anyway. For the most part, they they leave the uh, subsidiary companies alone to do whatever the hell they want. Uh, yeah, they're Twitch. good about not ruining shit that they get their fingers into. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And so Twitch is able to do all the crazy stuff it still wants to do. Mm-hmm. And this past week, something really interesting happened on Twitch, and that is to say, oh, that Power was a good seg. <laughs> Thank that you. Was a six seg. Six seg. Yeah. <laughs> I should have some guitar music for this, like you know, like a power chord or something, or like a riff. Yeah. There are plenty of riffs, Sick. by the way, <laughs> in Power Rangers, or the sick 90s guitar riffs. Oh, God. <laughs> Did you watch the Twitch.tv um, Power Rangers marathon? Did you jump in to catch any of it? I actually did not. Ah. Okay, well... <laughs> No, I mean there's still it's still going to go on for at least well, I don't know I don't know about doing when this podcast is um, released, but for us right now you can still jump in. You know, there's still plenty of it to go because they are going from the very beginning all the way to the last T V episode. Right. And that's like that's after they've turned into like dinosaurs and motorcycle gangs and shit. Like that's quite yeah, a journey. Pretty much. I mean there were dinosaurs to start off with. And then after that, it just I guess goes they were, and, yeah. But then they turned into like robot dinosaurs. Yeah, they were robot dinosaurs to start off with. Um, and then, you know, at the point I'm at, uh, I I don't even know like ninjas and shoguns, robot yeah. ninjas, something like that. Yeah, they um, did some crazy stuff over the course of their their storied history. It's insane, and I'll tell you something. It's not just the fact that it's robot dinosaurs or whatever. It's like looking back into the 90s, 
but through a really strange filter, right? <laughs> yeah. Because if you're for if you're not familiar with Power Rangers for some reason, and there's a chance you might not be anymore because this is a thing of the '90s, or mm-hmm. you know you were just a small kid and you don't really remember that much anymore. Yeah, um, if you're under twenty, there's a good chance you're like, "What Power Rangers?" Yeah. So it takes place in the high school, right? So the American version, it takes place in the high school, Angel Grove, California. And if you've got these quote-unquote teenagers, uh, really the actors are all adults, including one of them who's almost 30, and it starts to show after a while. <laughs> He's almost 30, jeez. I know, right? Talk about old, right? <laughs> 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 yeah, you adults get out of here. <laughs> no, actually, he really does look older and older as he goes along. It becomes really yeah. hard to justify that he's a that he's a, a high school student, right? Well, how uh, long, how long is he supposed to pretend that you only you're only in high school for four years? I don't know the uh, the continuity <laughs> of this of the series is kind of messed up, and I did not watch the yeah. whole thing because I've got other things to do rather than just watch Power Rangers the whole day. Dang! Right? Look at this big shot. I know, right? Oh god. Um yeah, so it takes place in this high school. And the way Power Rangers is is that it is an Americanized version of what is not commonly known as a Sentai or Super Sentai show in Japan, right? It's a bunch of this um costume warriors are uh, dressed basically Power Rangers, costume warriors riding robots around and killing monsters. And yeah. So what they did was they brought over, they bought the licensing rights to this show back in the 1990s. They filmed all the quote-unquote American parts in like sets with high schools and whatever. But then they kind of pasted the Japanese fighting into <laughs> into it. So when you watch all the Power Rangers, whenever they are in their full body costumes in which you cannot actually see their faces and fighting the robots and stuff, that's actually Japanese footage. Good. And it, it leads to some really weird things that I never noticed as a kid, right? Mm-hmm. So, first of all, the Red Ranger, the original one, Jason, he's huge, all right? He's got biceps the size of coconuts, all right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so so he will put on the costume because they do film some of the U.S. scenes uh, in in the U.S. with the actual American actors in the costumes, right? But then Uh you switch over to the Japanese scenes. Now you're in a Japanese city for some reason, right? And he shrinks because it's a Japanese actor, right? Yep. (laughs) Good. (laughs) Yeah. He shrinks and the fighting styles become different, right? Uh Um, The Yellow Ranger in the American version is a woman. The first one, it's a man in Japan. So it's it's obvious. It's a man. Ha! Oh my God. So when I was a kid, my favorite color was yellow. Uh huh. I always and I was like, yeah, the Yellow Power Ranger is my favorite. And people will tell me it's the girl, and I was like, fucking no, that's not true. And I didn't know. I didn't actually know this. I thought I was just stupid as a kid. But probably I was looking at the fucking fight scenes because what other part am I gonna pay attention to as a five year old? <laughs> and it's obviously a dude. Yeah. I feel way better now. Yeah, you were justified. I'm fucking yeah, justified. Twenty three years later. <laughs> Man, it's so strange. You know, like the fighting scenes, they are in Japan. There's no doubt about that. At one point, there's this villain or this monster of the week or whatever who has a bottle that like vacuums items into the bottle. He's a collector, right? And Is this then Link he... from Legend of Zelda? <laughs> no, it's, it's some kind of gnome or something. I don't know. <laughs> so okay. he vacuums up a car. Then he vacuums up um, an ANA plane. ANA being all Nippon Airways. Um, airplane, and then he he vacuums Tokyo Tower into the <laughs> into the vacuum cleaner thing, and Good. I can tell and now that I'm older. What's this that? Is happening right next to uh, the high school in Angel City or whatever. <laughs> yep, exactly. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so it's it's just really odd, but of course, as a kid, I never noticed. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, you don't notice shit when you're a kid. You're just yep. like, oh, this is great. Yep. They're in high school. I don't know what high school even is. Really. <laughs> yep. They're like they're wearing cool costumes, they're punching dudes made out of clay. That I understand. I know what clay is. Yep. Because what else do you need? <laughs> it's all so strange. Um the other version of high school, by the way, after a while it kind of stretches the definition of what high school is anyway. Sure. You know, it's it is a, a show made for kids and uh as you said, kids don't really have a good conception of what high school really is. 
And yeah, until you go to high school, you think high school is just a bunch of awesome people being awesome all the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, basically. It it kind of looks more like I don't know, it looks more like a college community. Uh and this co- college community, my god, community college like dining room to me. Sure. Except more um with more pretty people in it. <laughs> right. up yeah. until the yeah, point I don't know if you've ever been to a community college cafeteria oh I've been I I took my first two years of college in community college yeah let me tell you those people <laughs> um, often not pretty yep and I'm one of them I was one of them <laughs> no you're hot as hell <laughs> <laughs> They're, yeah. well, shit now here come the fanfics yeah you, you think that. Jason has good everybody. biceps look at mine um, yeah, that's true. No. <laughs> At one point during the Power Rangers series, you know, there's like a the fighting competition in the high school and, you know, it's like 2v2 and two of the guys are dressed up as ninjas or something. So that happens in high school. Good stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's it's quite a thing. Um, it's so hokey. You should watch it. It's hilarious. It's so funny. That I, I really need to. I, I don't know why I didn't like hop into that immediately. Like I heard about it, and I was like, "Oh, that's cool that they're doing that." And then it kind of like left my brain, and uh, and I never actually went and watched it. Oh, uh, that's uh, that's fine. Um, but now that you know, it's I don't know how hokey. No, definitely. Yeah, I don't know how hokey it is right now. But when I came in, it was just cheesy as hell. Yeah. No, it's it's crazy stuff. I mean, I. Like, the last time I've seen a Power Rangers episode was probably... I was probably, like, nine years old. And even then, I was like, this is getting pretty silly. <laughs> but as a small child, I really loved it. I never liked it. Oh, man. I was, like, five years old, right? Yeah. And uh, and I was in summer school, and I talked the um, teacher into doing, like, a Power Rangers day. Oh, you did? I uh, yeah, and I don't even remember, like, I know we, like, hung out and, like, play fought, like, we pretended we were fighting clay dudes and stuff. Mm-hmm. I don't remember what else happened, but she was like, fucking whatever, it's summer school, it doesn't matter, <laughs> <laughs> like, do a Power Rangers day, whatever, why not? And it was, uh, it was great, it was the best day of my young life. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine, Power Rangers day. We played Power Rangers for a day at school. I don't even know why I was in summer school, like, I never did badly enough to need to be. But I just did that year anyway. I'm not sure why, hmm. but it was fun. Well, I don't know. Let me think about this. Yeah, there was no such thing as summer school where I came from. So, just uh, no. Everybody has to stay inside. You just melt if you go outside. Right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. In the summer. Yeah, Malaysia is a nuclear apocalypse, or will be once North Korea is done de- negotiating with the Malaysian government. Mm. Um, so I thought that was going toward a um, global warming joke. <laughs> no, it's no. It's hard left into uh, international politics. No, I just read recently the Malaysian defense minister was like, well, if North Korea decides to attack, we'll be ready. Oh, boy. <laughs> no, I, I... Yeah, you you get him. <laughs> <laughs> scrappy little island. Oh, oh God. man. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, nobody takes it. Like, nobody's thinking that it will actually happen in which North Korea will start right. launching missiles to hit Kuala Lumpur, right? That's just not going yeah. to happen, but... Yeah, I don't know. That's not really a priority target for North Korea. No, it's not. I don't think. No. Um, but yeah, I mean, Malaysia and North Korea are in a bit of a spat right now because of the whole craziness over the assassination of Kim Jong-un's brother. So that's... You know, I actually didn't hear about that. Somehow. You did not hear about this. Got my... my political awareness is so laser focused on america right now oh okay um let me give you a very very quick rundown about what happened right so sure. kim jong-un's oldest brother I, and i've forgotten his name at this point i think it's kim jong-nam or something like that let's just call him um well kimbro kimbro is not a good name but whatever right he Kimbrough. he is kimberly kimberly yes you can watch more of her on power rangers as well um no <laughs> So the previous leader of um, of North Korea, Kim Jong Il, had a bunch of children. His third son, yes. Kim Jong Un, is the current leader of North Korea. Kim Jong Nam, his oldest son, did not become the current leader of North Korea because of certain disagreements. For example, when Kim Jong Nam, and I'm not kidding about this, uh, snuck out of North Korea to go to Tokyo Disneyland. All right. <laughs> 
<laughs> and I didn't know there was a Disneyland in Tokyo. Oh yeah, there definitely is. Um, uh, uh, wow. Disneyland in Korea. So let me just bring up the Wikipedia here. So he did not really get along with his father because he did not. He wasn't. He didn't want to be the heir to North Korea, right? Like okay. you know, I can't blame him for that. So yeah. Uh, a few months ago, or actually, actually last month in February, Kim Jong Nam was mur- allegedly murdered by two women in Malaysia, and okay. in the airport, in Kuala Lumpur airport. And what they did was the two women, one of them wearing an LOL T-shirt. I'm not even joking about this. <sighs> oh, okay. Yeah, you've heard about this now, right? Yeah, I saw that. I didn't realize it was Kim Jong Un's brother. Yeah. I just saw the murder with the LOL shirt. Yeah, <laughs> the shit. murder with the How did LOL I? LOL that shit. seems like such an important part of the story. How did I? Not, <laughs> how was that not the first thing it fucking said? Sorry, go on. Yeah, the allegation was that so that he was grabbed from behind and a liquid sm- was splashed on his face, and this turned out to be a chemical weapon called VX nerve agent, and then he died. Do you say VX nerve agent? Yeah. Nerve agent. Nerve agent. Sorry, I heard nerve. <laughs> nerve agent. Nerve. I was, yeah. So, <laughs> go yeah, on. nerf the chemical weapons. That's what all the treaties are for. Nerf this. <laughs> um, yeah, so he died. And now there's a dispute between yeah. North Korea and Malaysia uh, with regards to, right. the, to where the body is going to go and the investigation into the murder. Oh, weird. Yep. So... Okay. Yeah, it's just, it's been kind of crazy. The news coming out of Malaysia, and again, for those of you who somehow don't know this, I'm from Malaysia. The news from Malaysia coming out this last couple of years has been just complete nuts to me. Just everything. Ugh. Hello? Hey, uh, sorry, I'm here. I'm uh, I'm not sure what to say to that. Yeah, but... <laughs> yeah I don't blame you. <laughs> I don't follow Malaysian news because I don't have any particular ties to it. Yeah. Um... And I'm just I'm I'm generally bad about international politics. Yeah, it's there's some really weird stuff going on right now. Oh God. Yeah. I mean, not that things aren't weird here in the United States, but outside of the United States too. Yeah, things are uh, things are pretty <laughs> strange right now. <laughs> it's it's kind of worrying. I feel like we're right on the verge of a an enormous historical event and i want it not to be a terrible one. Oh, yep yep all i can do is like but it kind of feels like it's gonna be a terrible one all i can do is hope that every day is just stupid social media stuff like mcdonald's right oh god <laughs> yeah what what was it that they said? They said something shitty to Donald Trump just out of nowhere, right? The McDonald's Twitter account just said that yeah. he's a disgusting president and he has small hands or something. It's so... Yeah, that was it. They were like, you're a disgusting human being and also you have small hands, Donald Trump. Just out of nowhere <laughs> for no reason. No, like, context. Just fucking tearing into him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's one thing if, like, you know, like, I don't know, somebody on social media did it, but it's McDonald's. Why? Yeah. Yeah, why? <laughs> why, why take that fight, McDonald's? Well, I mean... Because, <laughs> like, j- there's already so ubiquitous. It's like, there are a lot of people that who are like, well, I know where I'm going to lunch today. But also, you know, there's the fucking Trump supporters who are like, I'm never eating at McDonald's again. It's like, why divide the populace like that? Why, <laughs> why take that? Why take that fight? Well... It's crazy. It's probably a disgruntled employee or a hacker. One of those things. I don't know which one it could be, but maybe. Well, it's still fucking up, though. <laughs> Wait, no, they deleted you, you'd it. You think? Did they? Delete I'm pretty it? sure okay, they it did. It was still up last I last I heard. It was still up. yeah. But I guess they eventually. Did. But it was up for at least five or six hours. Yeah. Yeah, McDonald's. Uh, because that was when I when I saw it. I saw like this has been up for a long ass time. How is this possible? And you would think if they had a problem with it, that would get taken down in like five minutes. Yeah, like somebody, the fucking CEO of McDonald's is gonna get a call at three in the morning and be like, "Sir, we got a problem on <laughs> our social media." <laughs> it's like, bring me his head. Yep, and delete the tweet. Yep, but uh. Yeah, it took a surprisingly long time for them to figure out that was a bad idea. <laughs> also, you would think that McDonald's Twitter account would be run by, like, a committee of 15 people. Well, you see, here's you the know, thing. Like, there's, there's not, they all have to turn their keys on the McDonald's Twitter account to get in. 
to get the password for that day so they could make a tweet. No, McDonald's is claiming now that it was an outside hacker. Okay. Yeah. Well, convenient cover story, <laughs> but I feel like they would have had it taken care of much more quickly if that was actually the case. You know, I wonder. Weird. You know. Weird, weird. If they actually wanted to do this, I have a suggestion for them. If you, if McDonald's decides that they want to make a jab at Trump for real, um, offer to send him a Mac Junior. There you go. There you go. Something or just it's just offer to cut his Big Mac in half. <laughs> Makes it easier to hold. Yep. Oh God. Anyway, we were talking about <laughs> Twitch, were we not? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we haven't left fucking no no. We were talking about uh oh, we were talking about Power Rangers. We were talking about Power for, Rangers. For, yeah, for a second I was like, shit, you're right. We haven't le- left our first fucking topic. No, we're on topic two. We're doing great. Thirty one minutes in, we're on topic two. Why don't we? Do, do you have any final Power Rangers thoughts before we move on? Uh, no, except that you should go watch this thing because uh because it's such a surreal thing to watch. Just how nineties it is, number one, and how completely goofy it is for the other how is twitch chat during all of this i imagine it's great mm. twitch chat is uh well they're in love <laughs> with kimberly <laughs> i bet yeah every time there's a woman on the screen like oh grill excellent oh specifically kimberly uh just kimberly. yeah specifically okay. the other thing what, what is she pink ranger she's pink ranger yep yeah Oh, sorry. My neighbor just yelled very loudly. He's Twitch chat now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> See, I didn't pick that up. Oh, good. Was, for me, it's like it never happened. Yeah. The other thing, and okay, let's be clear about this. This was the 90s, and back in the 90s, cultural sensitivity standards are not what they are today. No. No. They are not. <laughs> so, first, so there's this, um, there's this thing, there's this kind of mid-season thing, I guess, I don't know what it is, in which the power... Mighty Morphin Power Rangers became the Mighty Morphin Alien Rangers for a bit. All right. Okay. And <laughs> <laughs> but but it's not what you think. <laughs> what They're you... actually just Mexicans. <laughs> no 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 no. This actually that ties into that. So let me um go on with that. Okay, right. go on. So yes. <laughs> from what I understand, what happened was that the actors decided that they, there was a contract dispute basically, right? So the actors okay. didn't show up to film the Power Rangers. Okay. Oh no! What are they going to do? <laughs> right. So they had this <laughs> this really bizarre subplot, not subplot. This lasted for like ten episodes, in which oh all of the Power Rangers get turned into little children. All right, so they brought in child actors okay. to replace the adult sure. actors, and in order yeah. to do the actual fighting with the aliens, the quote unquote alien Rangers arrived, and these are actually from another planet, right? They are the goofiest thing, all right? They, they act like stereotypical movie aliens from the 90s in which they talk very funny and they've got bulbous heads for some yeah. reason. They look like grape, um, blackberries, honestly, their heads. Yeah, and, and they make the, the peace sign a lot. They do. They make stupid gestures when they're, you yeah. know, they're teleporting in their hands or above their heads. Uh, they, have to, they have to be hydrated all the time. It's a major plot point. <laughs> I don't understand why. <laughs> you know, to the point in which there are scenes in which they jump, in, they hover around lakes. There's even a scene in which they go walk into a car wash um, because they need to be hydrated. Uh, Rita Repulsa, the villain, sends, tries to dehydrate them. I, I don't even know why anyone thought this was a good idea. <laughs> but, <laughs> but in order to become what would be Power Rangers Zeo, the next episode, the children are all sent to various parts of the world to find power crystals, Zeo crystals, whatever, right? And okay. so the first kid is sent to discover their roots because honestly speaking, okay, the Power Rangers had pretty good representation from a night for a ninety show, right? Uh, the racial sure. diversity is there. They try to involve deaf people, you know, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, right? Yeah. Um, I've heard that uh, the Blue Ranger Billy he was harassed for being gay, but you know that was behind the scenes. They at least tried to portray some cultural sensitivity on the screen. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So the children are sent around the world, but they're not really sent around the world as they are sent to very interesting cultural stereotypes of what these parts of the world are going to be. So okay. Twitch chat had a few day with that. Um, you know, like the the. Um, the Asian, I guess he's Asian, uh, Power Rangers got sent to Asia. And I say quote-unquote Asia because I couldn't identify which part of Asia this is, right? 
They didn't say? They were just like, oh, he's going to Asia. I don't know. Like, I, I just don't know. He That's was surprising. speaking Korean. <laughs> so the kid was speaking Korean, right? Okay. And But, you know, the people were just walking around dressed like they're from 300 years ago because that's how it is in Asia right now. Good. And yeah, it was just like dudes with rickshaws and shit. No, they were dressed like, you know, like a drunken master from a no, Chinese Kung Fu movie, Drunken Master. Basically, like the old <laughs> Chinese sensei you see in Kung Fu movies, right? Yeah. That was the main side yeah. character for that. And okay. even though his name is Kai Oji, which is Japanese, I, I don't even know, right? <laughs> Huh. It was pretty good. Yeah, so <laughs> it's like fuck it, it's all the same. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just, just throw it in. It's Asian. Get it in there. Yeah, good. Yeah. So and then of course when the um when they were sent to Africa, she, uh, Twitch chat just went crazy with the emotes as they always do. Oh, of course. Yeah. So that's Twitch chat for you. Twitch chat just goes. You know they'll just throw it all out. Whenever somebody, whenever anything explodes, you know what emote comes out. Uh. <laughs> yeah, so that answers your question. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. So yeah, Tw- Power Rangers on Twitch, the new Bob Ross <laughs> it, on Twitch. It really is. Although I don't think they will repeat it like Bob Ross because they're really doing this to the run up to um the Power Rangers movie that's coming out uh, in a few days. Yeah, very exciting. <laughs> I'm sure that's gonna be great. Have you seen the trailer for that? I I saw it, some of it. <sighs> it. I don't remember it very well. To me, it looks bad. It looks awful to me. Yeah, they all look like Beatles. That, that was my impression as well. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it was a while ago that I saw that. Yeah. Well, I haven't really thought about it since. Ah, uh, speaking of things that don't look quite right, how about that Mass okay. Effect Andromeda? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> okay. So, you, have you seen? The one gif that's circulating Twitter where this woman is like, she gets mad and she walks away from a conversation and it's just the most ridiculous walking animation you've ever yeah. seen in your life. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. Yeah, she's just like, she turns around and she walks away and it's like, she's swing she's like, she has her arms stiffly at her side, but she's like swinging them back and forth a little yeah. bit. And like, she's like bobbing her head back and forth and it's just like... It's it just has nothing to do with human movement at all. Yep. It looks so weird, so crazy. Ah, uh, yep, yep, yeah. It's uh, it's quite a thing. I've seen all kinds of gifs at this point, and I'm just a little surprised to say the least that that it yeah. was allowed to to go to this level. Yeah. And, uh, like at first I thought I was just being an asshole I was like maybe this is all Mass Effect I don't know like people love Mass Effect maybe this isn't the point maybe people are just being dicks uh, but to me it looked hilarious but my girlfriend huge Mass Effect oh, no. fan now super worried oh, <laughs> she's no. like oh god no not like this uh, because she agrees that it looks fucking trash compared to previous games yeah um, so yeah concerning stuff yeah that's the thing right like, my first experience, because I haven't been keeping up with Mass Effect. I haven't played Mass Effect 3, right? So, out, just out of sheer curiosity, uh, earlier yesterday, I decided to drop into a streamer's, uh, to a stream just to see what Mass Effect Andromeda is like. And I was kind of uh-huh. taken aback by how artificial the characters look, how Uncanny Valley everything looked. It's real weird, yeah. Yeah. So I thought, I was wondering to myself at first, you know, is this just my imagination? Am I just too spoiled by The Witcher 3? And <laughs> did Mass Effect always look like this? And then the answer to that is no, right? No. Yeah, not at all. <laughs> it looks really fucking crazy and weird. Yeah. And I don't know how this happened. Bioware is a super successful company. They just, uh, they're coming off of Dragon Age Inquisition did super well and was super good as far as I know. What happened? They, they know how to animate. Yeah. Why aren't they doing it? There's a, there's a fucking gif that I just saw like last night or this morning or something where, um, this person is like, you know, like an alien is like coming up behind somebody's head and they pull out their gun and shoot it. But it's the the gun is backwards. <laughs> yep. The gun is pointing the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> How do you do that? It's just like, it's comically bad. It's like fucking the Hanna-Barbera of game animation. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't. Know. And not only that, but also the writing is horrible. I uh, there was this one exchange. God, I wish I had like written down quotes from it because I don't. Re- all I remember is the idea of it that it just felt so fucking stilted and bad. And the, it just the the acting and then the facial expressions of the character. It was just a whole big pile of bad that coalesced into an awful fucking scene. I remember one particular line that I saw, and it's okay. yeah. It's my face is tired. Yeah, <laughs> they actually said this. That's right. My face yeah, is she's tired. Like, Sorry, my face is tired from all this stuff I have to deal with. <laughs> um, and she says that without moving her face. It's <laughs> like, oh, I see. So you just didn't want to animate. You wanted to save yourself like five seconds of facial animation. So you just had her say that. <laughs> <laughs> is, that is that it? Weird. I thought it was just bad what? writing. I have no idea. I just, yeah, it it seemed like the line was an excuse for the fact that they didn't fucking animate her face. Oh no, I hope that's not what it is. But uh, yeah, I don't think that is what it is, but that's how it came off. Oh no. It's weird. It's super strange. I don't know what they meant by it, to be honest. I just have no idea. Yeah, but it's just so perfect though. It because that one line just encapsulates everything that's been whirling around Mass Effect Andromeda <laughs> these last two days or so. It does. Yeah, yeah. so that's unfortunate. I have a friend who is like, he hardly ever plays video games, but he, he likes space games and he's pre-ordered this one and I don't have the heart to tell him. Like, Oh, oh no, that reminds me. I <laughs> actually, for a ride. I also have an acquaintance like this, an industry acquaintance, right, in my, in my field mm-hmm. who never plays any games except for Call of Duty, an old one, and Mass Effect. Those are the only two games she plays. Oh boy. Well, now it's down to one. <laughs> <laughs> oh no yeah the thing with the uh, the thing with david though my friend is he like he buys a lot of games and plays them for an hour oh okay he just has a lot of money to throw oh yeah <laughs> so he's like it's not it's not gonna be the end of the world for him he's gonna be like oh well this isn't great um but like you know he bought dark souls 3 just because like on my i didn't mean to recommend it to him but i like he asked me what i've been playing recently i was like oh yeah i got dark souls 3 recently and he's like so he bought it and then like didn't finish the tutorial <laughs> and that's you know he's fine with that yeah um so this is gonna be another disappointing thing on his disappointing pile of games but when he told me that i was just like oh boy okay you have fun with that well how about those people though who have been waiting for mass effect andromeda for like four years yeah totally no there's a brian buckaloo the guy who made um caves of cud uh-huh. I remember he was really excited about it until all this shit started oh, happening. No. I haven't seen him tweet about it since then. <laughs> but he was like, yeah, dude, Mass Effect and Drama are coming out soon. <laughs> and then then they started letting people stream it and post videos of it. And now suddenly it's like, he hasn't said a thing. He's oh, no. Like, oh. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's really, because there's so many people, you know, with a company like Bioware, you kind of just expect every game to be a hit. And even even if it's not going to be like the best game ever, you expect a certain minimum level of quality. And I honestly have no idea how they fell this far short of it. I don't know. I, it might be a, a studio thing because Bioware consists of yeah. multiple studios. They might have had a, a less experienced studio do this. I don't know. But it seems odd to me but that... But even... Well, Sorry, yeah, no. no, it seems odd to me that they would... Because more people are looking at this like it is the sequel to Mass Effect, right? Whether it was meant yeah. to be or not, we don't know, or I don't know. But if they let some people... Well, you can't call a game Mass Effect after Mass Effect 3 and have it not be the sequel to Mass right. Effect 3. Right, exactly. And if they, like... <laughs> if they handed it off to less experienced people and this is the result of it, then I don't understand the decision behind that. Yeah, it's really... So many levels of that decision make no sense. Like, first off, put your fucking A-team on Mass Effect. Second off, if you didn't, at least, like, check up, epo- uh, check up on them. Like, look at the stuff. Be like, oh, wait, dude, hang on. You animated this gun backwards. <laughs> like, you know, pay attention to this shit and correct it as it's happening instead of just releasing the game. Like, what? Yeah. It's not, yeah, it's not as if, like, I could see them blowing a lot of money on this and being like, oh, shit, this is what you made. I can't see them being like, oh, well, good job, you know, let's put this up on the refrigerator, fucking release it, guys. Like, what? No. So, to be... They, they have opportunities to, like, turn around on this. They do have a, an opportunity well, to... Well, they had. Well, no, what <laughs> I was going to... No, 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 not quite, because me- the game technically is not out yet. 
So they That's they true. cannot reverse this sinking ship if it is a sinking ship, right? I don't know. They cannot. They can at right. least fix some of the dumb things like the gun being backwards. But yeah, well, they can. Yeah, they can be in crunch mode for the next fucking like two weeks or whatever. Oh god! But they can't. They've already the the ship has sailed, and now, like you said, they're just, they could just fucking hammer planks onto the leaks in the ship right. as it's sailing but they can't just stop they can't say hang on we need another six months to fix right this. right no the game's um, coming out in like less because than a week. it's too late yeah but like what what i'm saying is just like they had to know before this this can't be the first they've heard of oh this game is shit like this is bioware they do focus testing and stuff they had to know right so I mean, let's put it this way, okay? The people who are still who are still excited about Andromeda are saying, we don't know yet if the game is shit, right? What I'm saying is that That's the true. game, it does not look good at this point. Maybe I'll no, be proven wrong, it. but all the stuff that's coming out does not look good. Here's what they're doing. What? <clears throat> they are lowering expectations. <laughs> this is a fake build. <laughs> a bunch of stupid bullshit. Then when the game comes out, they're going to be like, just kidding, it's actually great. <laughs> And everybody's, everybody's going to think it's so much better because it, it won't be trash. Oh, wow. It's like the reverse No Man's Sky. Exactly. It's the opposite of No Man's Sky. <laughs> oh, man. Good. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so anyway, a guy made um, Pokemon Red in Minecraft. Oh, yeah. That was insane. Uh, can you, like, I think you might be the best one to describe it. Sure, let me set this up for you. So, this guy has made a Minecraft server that's like, you spawn in and you're in this giant Pokemon stadium with a huge, like, handcrafted uh, Charizard and Blastoise sculptures that are like, you know, 50 times the height of a human. And between them is a Game Boy Color uh, built in Minecraft that is also, like, you know, stories high with a big screen on it. And you go up and you play this thing and it's pokemon red perfect like you there's a there's a video of this you can look this up very easily um but they they've taken all the graphics and everything from pokemon red and all the coding and you can just you can just play pokemon red on this thing and it's a screen made out of like fucking blocks of wool and um you know every other you know shade of black and gray uh block in minecraft and they just move around and then um and it all works perfectly. Even, you know, he made sure to include glitches like the Missingo glitch and shit. And then at the end of the video, it's it zooms out and you can see the programming, which is just an endless fucking expanse of sheets of uh, circuit board, basically, that have been made out of Minecraft tiles. And it's unbelievable. It's so cool. Yeah, so to be clear, right, he actually made, a th- from Minecraft blocks, a program capable of running Pokemon Red. Yeah. yeah, and people have done this for simpler games before. People have made like Pong and shit in Minecraft, um, but this is, as to my knowledge, this is a level of complexity that's unprecedented. Yeah, I um, yeah, it took him. How long did it take him to to do it? T- Twenty one months. Oh my god. Yeah, they say he just like. Having his Minecraft character walk around, he traveled like two hundred eighty or uh, twenty eight hundred kilometers or something. Wow! <laughs> in uh, in game space to uh, to walk around and make all this shit, it's nuts. It's absolutely crazy. Um, and he obviously like he hollowed out a whole fucking Minecraft world and then just built it in his own image. the th- The crazy thing about this to me is not only did he have to reverse engineer the code of pokemon red and then build it in minecraft this is like this is a, a more basic thing than that this is this isn't like he didn't rewrite the fucking program in c sharp or something he rewrote this shit in assembly language oh god like this this is him or not even that like even a more basic version of computer programming because he just he made a physical computer he physically placed the ones and zeros that make up this program holy shit like like the the amount of reverse engineering is crazy. I can't believe that somebody in this day and age knows enough about like basic level computer function to make something like this. It's insane. Right, right. It, it's because it, like at this level, that stuff for computer programmers at this point, all of that stuff is just abstracted away. Right. 
on like it, like computers do that now. We don't have to deal with the ones and zeros, but this guy did it anyway. Yeah. I I took an assembly language class. So I spent an entire semester writing assembly language. It's not fun. How is it? <laughs> not fun. I don't like it. I did not like it. It's like how would you like to build it physically? <laughs> exactly, right? It's like you said, you know, it's like to, just to, to output hello world is like 16 lines or something in which I'm moving Jesus things Christ. from memory address to memory address. God. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's nuts. <laughs> it, it, let me uh it says how many memory blocks there are in this uh Where did it go? I linked it to you. There it is. Um it is 357,000 command blocks. Oh. Which I I think are the equivalent of like a 1 or a 0, I'm not certain. Yeah, it's And no mods, no mods were used, by the way. This is <laughs> vanilla minecraft presumably in creative mode i hope and he wasn't like <laughs> going inside to hide from creepers and shit like oh shit the cpu got blown up by a creeper fuck <laughs> yeah i, I hope uh, so right <laughs> so funny but still it's so funny and sad at the same time to think of like creepers like blowing up various parts of the entire machine <laughs> Yeah, it's like it's suddenly you're playing Pokemon on your fucking giant Game Boy, and suddenly the screen goes black. And you're like, "Fuck!" A creeper <laughs> blew up a goddamn memory sector. <laughs> Gotta go rebuild that. Yeah. God. Oh man. Yeah, I, the amount of work that went into that, I can't even fathom it. Yep. Yep. It's absolutely absurd. And the amount of knowledge, the amount of expertise that went into that. You can't, like, not anybody could just, like, grind away at that for two years and make it. You have to also have extensive knowledge of how computers function. Yeah. God. Yeah, just just incredible stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, I highly, highly recommend checking that out. You can download the map. He says you need at least two gigabytes of RAM, and you should save frequently because sometimes, you know, in the simulation... Like, I'm sure it's not his fault, but in the simulation of Minecraft, occasionally the fucking redstone will get fucked up and uh, and break your game. Yeah, it's still nuts. Yeah, no, crazy. Absolutely crazy. Oh, boy. Well, speaking of things that can go crazy, we should move on to our game of the week now. Mm-hmm. And that would be the newest game from, uh, from Tiny Build. It is called Street of Rogue. Uh, you might have heard of it because it had a free weekend, a uh, launch weekend last week. Apparently, it's the very first Steam game to have ever done so to have a launch, a free launch weekend, right? Wow, I did not know that was happening. Actually, I should have tweeted about it. Yeah, I didn't Fuck. know it was happening either. I would have tweeted about it as well. Uh, I forgot anyway. But yeah, uh, Street of Rogue is what you would think of. It's kind of a mix between an immersive sim, which is a, a game like Deus, Deus Ex in which you have to perform some kind of objective, but there are many ways in which you can do it, like stealth or um, blowing things up or killing people or sneaking in, hacking, etc. And nuclear throne, that's what the developers say. So think of it as like a 2D Deus mm-hmm. Ex in which you can shoot people or sneak in if you want, right? And yeah. the thing that's so unusual and so fun about this game is that the the developer, there's only one person, he tried to cram in as many possibilities as he can think of into this early access game, and it's still going on. And by that I mean, for example, you can choose to be a soldier in the game, or you can choose to be one of the, I don't know, a dozen or other character classes like shopkeeper, thief, hacker, gorilla, jock. And all of these people have different approaches and different abilities towards completing the missions, like kill this person or steal this item or press this button. And it, it's insane sometimes. Mm-hmm. And it's also uh, up to four-player co-op that seems to work really well. Yeah, yeah. You and I streamed it a couple of days ago. Yeah, we, we streamed it uh, over at twitch.tv slash green9090 at, uh, on a Monday, I think. Yeah. And, uh, and it was... a ton of fun it was really really good so we we ended up you know we we would be different characters so i you know in one run i was a gosh a soldier i think and zen was a doctor 
Yeah. And the doctor is basically like a, a stealthy guy. He he can't kill anybody. He can't use weapons, but he sneaks up on people and knocks them out with chloroform. <laughs> so we had like, you know, Zen is the like the guy who sneaks in and stealths around and I'm the guy who fucking clean cleans up the messes, and <laughs> kills everybody. Um, for example, soloing every police officer in the game on a couple of occasions. But yeah, it's great. You just every single level is just this new like mini city that's like a top down you know RPG city, and there are shops you can go to and shit, and uh, and there's all these buildings, and they're all fully destructible and breakable. But there are police officers running around who will get mad at you if you do that, and so you you can choose to like not piss anybody off, and if you're a if you're a stealthy enough bad enough dude, you can just sneak in and do the objective that way. Or you can just fucking go crazy and, you know, be a giant gorilla that just punches everybody in the face. Mm -hmm. And it's all it's all valid. So it's really fun. Like, the, the possibility of space of this game is something you don't see very often, especially in a game that's as accessible as this. So it's really fun just looking at an objective and being like, okay, what's the best way for us to uh, conquer this? Especially, I think, in multiplayer. Right. I think it's really, really good. That's a good way of putting it, the possibility space, because it's actually quite large. Uh, we didn't actually yeah. scratch the surface of a lot of the things you can do in this game when we were playing it. Yeah, totally. I I have like a third of the characters unlocked. Yeah, and it, um, yeah, there's there's so much. It's crazy. Yeah, the characters. I was constantly confronted with new uh, ways to do stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the character diversity is part of the madness, but the other thing is the item diversity as well. That's huge. Mm-hmm. Right. So yeah, there's so many things. Yeah, there's um, I don't know. I could go on. Like you could get an uh, ammo stealer and steal remotely steal ammo out of a person's gun. That's a thing mm-hmm. you can do in this game. Uh, one of the things that can happen. There's like a spelunky teleporter that lets you go through walls. Yeah, yeah. A hologram yeti you can use to um to distract people, but. Mm-hmm. It goes a little bit further than that, actually. Uh, one example of that is that the fact that some buildings have exposed uh, ventilation ducts. And yeah. you can put in something illegal if the police aren't watching and gas everyone in the room in the building. And that's one way of getting them to run out of the building so that you can run in. Or you can just kill them all and then run in and do what you need to do. Right. Yeah. However, uh, the, it has like a very roguelike, or it, and by roguelike I mean like ASCII roguelike style system of syringes, which are like you know they're unidentified potions, like pills in Isaac, where you don't know what they're gonna do. Um, so you could put one of those in a ventilation thing, and it might kill everybody, or it might you know turn them all invisible or buff them in some other way, it make them all super fast <laughs> or something. You never know. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's you know that can backfire very quickly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's great. Um, did it is great. did we do any especially creative things in during our stream? I'm trying to remember. Well, um, I think the first time, the first um, guy we were trying to rescue on the first level, you were like, "Oh, I could try to open this door," and I was like, "You know what? I just, I'll just put down this bomb by it." So I put a time bomb next to the door that we were trying to get through, and it leveled like. <laughs> a city block <laughs> <laughs> like Zen was like no and I was like well it's already down now and uh, it totally like instead of just opening the door to the room I was trying to get into which is what I thought it would do it cleared the entire fucking room we were trying to enter and killed the man we were trying to rescue inside in addition to taking out like half the building I was in and half of the adjacent building <laughs> <laughs> so um, I don't know if that counts but that was something that happened. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that certainly adds to the chaos of it, for sure. And, you yeah. know, one of the things that we did is th- in every three levels in the game, a quote-unquote disaster will happen, randomized. And one of the disasters is to have a giant robot oh, with missiles uh, oh, chasing yeah. after you. And you can totally use those missiles to gain access to places where you normally cannot, right? So if they blow up a wall or something, you can just run in and snatch what you need and run out, theoretically. Yeah, it doesn't even make the police mad. <laughs> it's just this, it wasn't me, officer. It was just this robot who happened to be aiming at me. <laughs> <laughs> but to really demonstrate some of the creativity some people have um, had success with, let me just read a comment from Rock Paper Shotgun, okay? Sure. So this person was saying, one time I actually managed to kill someone by using giant pills on them. 
And giant pills are these pills that make you huge, right? Mm -hmm. So he was in this small room, the target, in the center of a facility (laughs) with a generator in it. And so he put these giant pills into the ventilation system. (laughs) And every single NPC inside the the building turned (laughs) huge. And he became so large that he took up all the space in his room, exploded the generator in the room, and blew him up. Excellent. Oh, that's really good. Yep. Oh, man. Yeah, the the depth of simulation here. Like I said, like, there are definitely games like this that have really deep simulations, like Caves of Cud or Dwarf Fortress or, you know, games like that. But the big difference I see with Streets of Rogue is that this is an accessible, you know, real time. You just jump in. It's really easy to figure out how to play. It's not like you don't have to learn a million things. You just kind of passively experience the huge depth of shit that can possibly happen. Yeah. In a way that's it's really successful at doing this in a way that's not overwhelming to the player. Yeah, I was really impressed. Yeah, you can be, and the game's still being developed. It's an early access. You know, it's kind of yeah. crazy how much more interesting items are going to make it in to just make it so that you can creatively do whatever you want. Mm-hmm. Here's another example. All right, from the same person. So he had to kill a bunch of NPCs. And so what he did was he just threw all the banana peels he had collected on in the front of the entrance. And then he went over to a window and started punching the window. So they got pissed. They ran outside, slipped on all the banana peels, and he just shot them whenever they came out. <laughs> good. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, bananas are like one of the most common food items. And when you eat them, you get a peel. And, uh, you know, just like you would expect, you know, it works about the same as it does in Minecart. Or uh, Minecart. Mine, Mine. Uh, fight Mario Kart. Mario Kart, yep. Jesus Christ, I <laughs> missed that so hard. Mario Kart. That's what I was trying to say. You put down the banana peel, they slip and get fucked up. The other thing about banana peels, I should say, is that if you kill an enemy or kill yourself using a banana peel, because when you slip on them, you take 5 HP of damage. Right, you unlock mm-hmm. the comedian character. All right. Oh yeah. Yeah, and I haven't <laughs> I played. Did... Yeah. I didn't. Uh, I I think I unlocked him, but I never played him. Yeah. Should have uh, should have figured that out. Yeah, I haven't played much with him, but I can tell you his spe- special ability is to tell jokes. And okay. he. <laughs> Good. <laughs> yeah, and they either make people happy or they piss them off. I don't know what I can't remember what else he can do, but that's one of his things. Like it's just that kind of like. I'm just going to toss it all in into this game kind of creativity that I really enjoy. Yeah. Yeah, this is one of the most fun like roguelikes I've played recently and also one of the fun, most fun multiplayer games I've played recently. Yeah. Like, this this game is fucking excellent for having a friend or two or three and just fucking around and having fun together. Yeah. Because it, it constantly puts you into... It constantly gives you situations where it's like... You know, what kind of wacky thing can we do to accomplish this, you know? And you you just try new shit, and it's always funny and interesting and hilarious and just a good time. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you, I'm shocked that not more people have played this game, honestly. Uh, It's... Yeah, it really, it deserves a following. I've been, like, I've been pretty roguelike out recently. Um, so I, I wasn't sure what to expect out of this one, but I, like, I was blown away. This is one of the best rogue likes I've ever played mm-hmm. by a large margin. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And it's just one developer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very impressive video game. Just check it out. Streets of Rogue on Steam. Yeah. There'll be a link in the description. Yep. Uh, one more thing I want to say about this game, and maybe one of you can tell me, can give me an answer for this because I don't know. Uh, this game is quite popular outside of the United States. Uh, and I don't really oh. know why. I think it, when it launched, it already had localization to many languages. And I want to say, I can't remember how I came across this, but I want to say that it that there are a bunch of Chinese fans of this game, and I don't know why. So if you have some understanding as to wh- how this happened, please let us know. Yeah, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. I, I couldn't say. Yep. It's fun anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a great game. You should definitely check it out. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that was this week's Game of the Week. Next week's Game of the Week is Shadowverse, which is the Hearthstone competitor from Japan. Uh, It's free to play. You can get it on Steam, or you can get it on iOS or Android for free. Well, I just said that. But So if you want to play along with us, we'll be checking it out and comparing it to Hearthstone next week. And 
yeah, so check it out and let us know how what you think about it. Mm-hmm. Check out Shadowverse. Keep an eye on Zen and my Twitter accounts because I think we're going to try to stream that at some point this week. Yeah, uh, probably early, early you know Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, something like that. Um, so yeah, Shadowverse, download it, play it, and also make your way over to Zen's channel because that's where next episode is going to be. So give them a subscribe now before you forget. And you'll be able to come back, get some more Game Not Game action, yep. and discuss Shadowverse with us. Also, email us, gamenotgamemail at gmail.com. If you have any kind of topics, any kind of crazy shit you want to talk about us or talk about to us, good game stories, um, news stories, whatever you got, let us know. Email us. Give us that email. And we'll see you guys next week. Yep. So I am um, interested also, if you have any crazy Streets of Rogue stories or any solutions that you came up with please do let us know as well yes definitely yeah tell us your streets of rogue stories if you have them they're very good yeah all right thanks for watching you're on green's channel of course be sure to subscribe to this channel and also to go to twitch.tv slash green 1990 to subscribe there or follow there i, I don't know what the term is now it's follow yeah I think it's follow there unless you pay me money, which you can't do because I'm not cool enough. <laughs> exactly. Although we probably sh- I, this is not enough to talk about right now. It's just that Twitch has uh, either reduced or made more vague its partnership guidelines, depending on who you ask. Okay, right. So, so there's no more follower requirement. Let's put it that way. Or no more viewer okay. concurrent viewer requirement. So maybe one day. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe one yeah, of us. We'll see. But if I start streaming more, I'll start applying as it has been i just haven't bothered because i never stream yeah same here i get tired when i stream i still don't know why Mm. yep but thanks for watching slash listening and we'll see you guys next week bye-bye yeah see you guys next week bye everybody